Um, okay. I have to keep this moving. I want to keep this schedule tight. So we're jumping right into our next guest. Let me go get the man who needs no introduction. There he is. Monty Connor. How are you, my man? Can you hear me? Okay. Will? I got you. You're on. Ah, awesome. Well, it was great seeing everything that Anthony had to say. Um, we actually tried to sign Anthony to Roadrunner back in the day. <laughs> there it is. If oh. you don't know who Monty Connor is, let me give you a little intro. Monty has been probably uh, he's probably designed the catalog for all the heavy music you've listened to in the past 20 years. Working at Roadrunner, signing some of the craziest bands, my favorite bands of all time. And now, you know, basically heads up Nuclear Blast and um i've been fortunate enough to work with him personally on many occasions making records and even with my own band and um he's probably one of the smartest guys with the best perspective on metal probably the best one of the best encyclopedias of metal i know you, this guy could talk about music all day and uh yeah he's a good friend well, and and thank you for coming on well, here and talking you, to people. you'd never know of my metal background you know looking at me um that's the funnest part of walking down the street is you know, living in Manhattan, I'm walking past metalheads all the time with Slipknot and Fear Factory and Machine Head shirts, and they have no clue, you know, that they're walking past yeah, the guy that's on those pants. So uh, I like being anonymous. It's kind of cool. I, I think it's great. So you're yeah. you're the first, like, label head that's on here from the metal world. I know we have a couple guests tomorrow. I'll be speaking with a few other people. Right. But um, you, I mean, you've had a crazy year. Like, I, I've, I've seen so many different... Um, I've seen so many different horrible things happen with the COVID pandemic. And since it's onset, like how has, um, like how is nuclear blast doing? How is like, how is it um, running? Right. Well, first of all, I can say that, um, you know, no, there's been no layoffs of staff. Everybody's worked from home. Um, you know, it's scary times in the music business right now, but I think nuclear blast more than most labels is pretty immune to it. Um, back in early I guess we announced in early 2019 that we had new ownership. We were purchased at that time by a ginormous uh, digital company called Believe Digital based in France. Um, but they're uh, seriously like one of the biggest dis digital distributors in the world. And that company is so focused on the future and digital and streaming, which is one of the reasons why we aligned with that company was because we felt Believe was the right partner to take us into the future. So, um, you know, being that we are owned by a digital company, it's business as usual. Um, you know, we're not looking to pull back. We're looking to expand. We have no issues here whatsoever. Um, but I don't know that it's, well, I'm not, I shouldn't say I don't know. It definitely is not that way for everybody. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, uh, a big decline in physical retail. You know, the physical retail sector was basically in the seventh inning before COVID came along. And I right. think now it's in the ninth inning. You know, yeah. you're going to probably see half these stores never reopen again. So what we've been getting now is basically look into the future. Um, everything now is, is just rapidly moving towards, um, you know, non-retail stores. That doesn't mean that physical is going to die. It just means that the power in physical is going to come th through direct sales. You're going to see in the future when you want to buy records, you're going to see kids going to Amazon. Um Labels are going to be, you know, and they'll also come to the record labels like we have in a, you know, a really extensive mail order company in, in L.A., Nuclear Blast Mail Order. So we're selling it. You know, most of the stuff we're selling during COVID is through NB Mail Order and Amazon. Um, and of course, through band accounts like a band like Fit for an Autopsy very actively engages fans. Most of your direct sales come that way. So you're just seeing a speeding towards that. Um, yeah, so, sure. it's a shame yeah. this record stores close because I. As a kid, I discovered a lot of music by browsing record stores. I think um, the beauty of that was, you know, it's a category. You go to the metal category, yeah. and you look through CDs, and like it's, um, it puts stuff in front of your face that um, you're not expecting. It's not directly yeah. recommended to you by some Spotify algorithm or like some yeah. advertisement. It's like, it's it was just this like wild open oh. world to like find bands and i don't know maybe it's nostalgic but i i am gonna miss no. the ability to do well, that i still do that like um you know there are no record stores left in manhattan basically so um every few months a buddy of mine a few friends of mine we drive out to vintage vinyl in Ford's, new jersey like one of the, the greatest yeah. local record store and My childhood record store yeah yeah like so as much as i stay on top of what's coming out when i go to vintage vinyl i'll see stuff that um 
that I didn't even know was out just by looking in the racks. Um, right. And that's an amazing experience. And I wind up buying impulse purchases, just, you know, shit that I didn't even go there to get that I just happened to see. Um, so it's just a shame that that experience is going to be gone. Um, although so many kids, young, you know, the younger generation is growing up today. They don't even know what record stores are. You know, right. you talk to like, a, you know, matter anymore. Yeah. No, talk it's... to the average teenager. They're like, what's what's a record store? Like people go to record stores to buy this stuff. So, sure. I mean, there's still an audience for it, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're you're working out of your apartment right now because I don't you know I don't know if everyone probably won't know but you are like in ground zero for where the COVID outbreak was in New York City yeah right? and you've been yes. quarantined for how long now um I when did it hit was it like more early second week of March maybe yeah so um, long enough not well, to no anymore <laughs> yeah. well the quarantining hasn't affected me hasn't affected me much because ever since i've been at nuclear blast starting in uh september 2012 i've been working from home so it's business as usual for me and i think the rest of the world is now catching up to this idea of working from home and by the way you're going to see a lot of people stay at home forever because i think labels are going to see that people can be 80 to 90 percent as productive at home and they can save on overhead and office costs and all that crap. So you're just, you know, you're just going to see a lot of people continuing to work from home. But I really haven't been affected because, um, like I said, this is just my reality. You're looking at the nuclear blast in New York office right here. I mean, that's the bathroom behind me in my apartment. Incredible. Um, it's, it's magnificent. And so, uh, you know, the only difficulty has been that now I have my wife and children home with me. And, um, you know, we have a pretty decent sized apartment, but still everybody's around. And, uh, you know, so I have to just become even more tunnel vision and just be in my own world and work away. I mean, literally like 15 feet away from me is the dining room. Like, you know, the family will be eating that in that direction and uh, I'll be working away like normal. Um, and on, yeah, top, the, on top of that too, the protests must be like right outside your window where you are. Yeah. They literally are outside my window, but just to backtrack, Will, to what you were saying before about COVID, um, you know, I'm right here, ground zero in Manhattan. And, you know, when this whole thing first hit, so many people were reaching out to me, knowing that I live in Manhattan and they had heard on the news, like this was literally ground zero for the for the United States. And uh, it was terrifying. But I have to say um, that people in Manhattan, are, we're paying attention. Like I can go outside my door and I've been out almost every day since this started, sometimes more than once a day. You can go out anywhere in Manhattan. The streets are empty. You know, I mean, I like to try and go out before nine in the morning, but I can go out at three in the afternoon. Nobody is around. Um, and even if there are people around, it's very easy to stay away from people. So it's really not as bad as it sounds. And people here have been paying attention. Um, and that's why you've seen the curve go basically down to, you know, way yeah. down. And, you know, the scary part about the protests happening worldwide or, you know, but specifically in the U.S. and here in New York is that. People don't know what's going to happen, how that's going to affect the curve. Like, I haven't heard anything about the curve rising back up. But, um, you know, we were we were conquering COVID here in New York until and, you know, now we have this new reality, which just made things so crazy. And, yes, I live in Union Square. I live one block from Union Square Park, which is always a hotbed of civil activity. Like whenever anything's going on, there are protests there. Sure. But the protests usually stay in the park. And this time they've spread to the whole area. So my specific corner, it was stuff going on constantly. I mean, I was seeing marches go by the apartment seven, eight times a day. And even in the afternoon during the daytime, it was scary. It wasn't, you know, like right now the protests are just peaceful, right? They're still happening on a daily basis, but it's during the day. Everything is peaceful. It's normal protesting, but it didn't start out that way. That first week was scary. And we had, um, you know, crazy shit happening at night, looting. I mean, I could see stores being looted, windows being smashed. I was watching people go in. I was watching the cops arrest people literally right under my window. So yeah. it was a, and we had helicopters overhead the whole time. And, um, you know, like, it's like you wanted to go hide in the bathroom. You couldn't escape the drone of the helicopters, even if you went to the bathroom. So sure. it's well, been a, it, it's, it's, I can't been a, say that, uh, I, I, I don't wish inconvenience on you, but if anything, I'm happy to see that there are still yes. people protests the tests happening around you. And you yeah. know, look, I I know you very well. A lot of people that are on here don't don't really know you, and I know you're not a political guy. And you know, 
felt maybe a little, you know, nervous about coming on here because you're just, you're a metalhead. You love music. You love the culture of metal. And you, and you know, the one thing that I do love about you and working with you is anytime I bring you an idea, like that involves like charitable work or like something relevant to a social issue, you like, you will blindly support it. And you don't care about any kind of backlash from it. And I see uh, now is a time where I see a lot of people hesitating because of how polarizing the metal community could be and how, you know, some of these, some of these older, you know, some of these older labels and bands like don't necessarily want to get involved and express their beliefs on social issues for, you know, fear of alienating a specific type of fan base. I'll call them a racist fan base, you know, but I really do appreciate that you let, um, more proactive artists lead the way. Yeah. Well, and, well, uh, well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, yeah, it's it. important. I mean, we as a label, like, and I would say this for most labels, most metal labels in particular, we like to align ourselves with artists who we, you know, who we believe in. Um, you know, so the artists on the label and their visions, for the most part, represent where we stand as well. Um, or we wouldn't sign these artists, although it's not always, you know, sometimes you don't really get to know people until you sign them, until you have a relationship with them. So surprises happen. But like, for example, when I signed Fit for an Autopsy, I had no idea you had this in you, this whole, you know, uh, you know, this side to you, this charitable, like, you know, the guy that's setting up this whole amazing uh, thing you got going here. Um, I didn't know that about you. So you know, I'm learning as well. But yeah, we do like to align with artists we believe in. And we believe in supporting those artists, not just their musical vision, but other areas as well. So that's one of the reasons why we're so involved and we can do better. And I'm on here and we're, you know, we're a big part of the raffle and and just trying to do our best to share your efforts on our social sites as well to draw people to this and hopefully get a lot of donations. Well, I really do appreciate that. And I know I won't spill the beans, but I know you have more in the works with nuclear blasts that are going to help support yeah. some causes. So I, well, uh, I'm glad to see that you're moving forward with other events. Well, too. Yeah. One of the things, Will, I didn't say before that, um, you know, a lot of labels are doing and we're very actively doing this right now is um, with retail shut down right now. We are very actively put, you know, and you see a lot of bands releasing digital singles and digital releases because you can surpass retail that way. You just, you know, and we did the fit for an autopsy, um, fear tomorrow single. We've done stuff for Soulfly, Hatebreed, As I Lay Dying, Chemist. Um, and we, you know, it's not like we're making any money off a one-off digital single. I mean, it's pennies, but we're doing it to support the artists and to keep you guys active and keep your name out there while everything is shut down. Um, yeah, well, I appreciate it, man. And I yeah. thank you for always letting us have a, have a voice and all the artists on your label. Okay. We have to talk about your giveaway. Because this is wild. I'm gonna let me put this up here. Wait, wait. I got it. I have it right here. I don't, oh, well, you got it. All right. Let's on, I'll show it. it live. Take it off. So show it live. Let's go. This is my Slipknot self-titled um, gold record award. Is it gold or platinum? Uh, well, sixty thousand uh, in the UK. UK. So that's one of the first plaques, then, because that's like in the milestones. That literally, been plaque. Yeah, literally one of the first plaques, and this has been hanging on my wall for years, and. Uh, you know, when you came to me and you're like, get involved, I wanted to personally get involved aside from all the stuff that Nuclear Blast is involved with for the raffle. So um, this is up for grabs. In fact, you know, I could, it's cardboard on the back. I could sign the back, write whatever you want. Just let <laughs> Will know what it should say. And because uh, I don't want to do it on the glass, but I'm happy to oh, part man. with this. Um, I wish I had more. I mean, I have more of this stuff. Most of it is in storage. If I had That's stuff right. here We're in my good. apartment. We're not stopping. We're gonna be doing this again. So I'll uh I'll bother you in a few months once we, once everybody gets back to work. But Monty, yeah. thank you so much for being a part of this. I always appreciate your support and the support of Nuclear Blast. And um I'm very happy that the people I work with, you know, can stand with myself and the black community on these important issues right now and oh. help further the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's thank really you again. Yeah, it's an amazing time right now. And, you know, one thing I forgot to say before and you touched on is, yes, all the protests and everything going on outside my apartment. It's been hellacious for me being here in Manhattan, but it's for such an amazing cause. You know, this stuff has to happen. So whatever inconvenience I'm going through here and who gives a shit? I mean, this is like a major fucking moment in this country and uh, and in the world. And uh, how great that it's happening. And uh, and thank you so much for your efforts and and. You know, I mean, you're one of the most proactive artists in this area out of everyone on the label. So I'm just 
really honored to be involved in this and to do my part. You're the best, man. I love you, dude. Thank you for coming on, and uh, we'll catch up this week. We'll talk right, to you soon. Thanks. Take care. All right. Monty Connor, he's a living legend. You can win this Slipknot self-titled UK silver sales plaque. That answers that question. That's like 60,000 copies, so that's maybe one of the first plaques they ever made. Um, Soundring.live, $10 charitable donation, get you entered. And uh, leave a note if you want to uh, specify any particular item. If we pick your name, we will give you that item that you wrote down. Um, I'm going to take two minutes, and then I'm going to bring on my next guest, which is Ethan Harrison. So I'll be right back.